Base is slowed at 21, but uh, uh, the field's really close. you got a really good field of cars here, and it's going to be tough to make the 16-car field. And why, again, 16? We're going to lock 16 in here through qualifying, and then it will go to um, – a last chance race four will come from the last chance race and then there will be four provisionals to give us 24 starters that means roughly we'll send 10 cars home and as you said there's a lot of good cars here i mean S steven nancy i believe he's going to be the first one out he's been a couple of tenths off but that's the difference between first and 33rd well it's amazing that you, you know th this is the greatest little racetrack there is in the country i mean it's so banked and so fast and everything but it's so tight that um you know if you're off a 10th man you're 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 in trouble here some of the guys that we'll be looking at today from final practice Derek thorne was the quickest at 11.262 seconds he ran 44 laps second quick one of the locals here at uh, Slinger Speedway, Alex Prunty, third quick 2020 NASCAR Cup Series champion Chase Elliott, track champion back in 2021, Luke Finhouse. I know, Rich, that one kind of stings a little bit because you could have won it. Well, could have, would have, should have. They, they never break when they're when they're slow. They always, no. they always break when they're fast. No. R.J. Braun, who is the current points leader here, fifth. Dennis Prunty, Brad Keith, Steve Apel, Levon Vandergeest, and Jacob Nottestad. So a lot of the local drivers there in the top ten, Rich. But then you look at 11, 12, 13, Ty Majeski, William Byron, and the fastest here yesterday, Eric Jones. And, again, you're talking just in that group of cars about a tenth of a second. Well, another thing, too, is that a lot of guys are putting tires on today, and it was, it was no limit. So we don't know who's put tires on, who hasn't, what's going on, how many guys mocked up more than once. Um, so it's, it's, it's a crapshoot. But like I said, you know, to make the top 16 here right now is pretty tough. Glad, again, that you are with us for this free view here on Facebook Live of qualifying for the 44th annual Cobblestone Hotel Slinger Nationals presented by Five Star Race Car Bodies. But... Again, this is just a free view of qualifying. Our coverage here will go over to RacingAmerica.tv exclusively at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central. We'll start with a quick pre-race show. We'll go into the uh, opening ceremonies, and then we will uh, get underway with our features here, which will feature the uh, local Pro Late models here at Slinger Speedway and, of course, the 44th Annual slinger nationals and you know you look through this list of drivers that have won this race you've won it four times uh matt kenseth he's won it eight times but you know you go back from the very first one in 1980 larry Dejans, alan kawicki dick trickle 1984 mark martin joe shear in 1987 butch miller in 1988 uh that's a mount rushmore of short track racers in and of itself. Well, it's just amazing how this happened. Uh, the story is that Wayne Erickson wanted Trickle to come race a race here, and they wanted to have a special. And uh, Dick says, well, I, I only got Tuesday nights off because we ran, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays in Wisconsin every night. And so Wayne come up with the first Nationals way back in, what, I can't remember what year it was, 44 years ago. <laughs> 1980. 80s. So, yeah, was, but I think I my first one was in 81. But uh, that's how it come about. The Dick, he wanted Dick to come around a race. And they made a big special out of it, and, and look what it's become. How important is it to get locked into this top 16? I, you know, I think folks automatically um, – look at a racetrack that is a quarter mile and says you're not going to be able to pass on this racetrack this place is different that's not the case here necessarily well in 21 we we ended up starting 20th because we bottomed out qualifying really bad but the car was incredible uh i drove from 20th to fourth in 40 laps and the yellow come out and the motor shut off and what happened was the starter solenoid stayed engaged and kept run the starter until the battery went dead and I've never cried in a race car too many times, but that day I did. I mean, I, I've never had a race car here like that in my life. Uh, we probably had four tenths on the field, and I wasn't even driving it. And uh, But, you, you know, what's great about this place is there's two grooves. 
and if you go to the outside and if you hold the guy down, get to his right rear quarter panel, um, you can stay there and, and get a really good run off of two. And a lot of places you know, don't have that. But uh, there's a lot of guys that don't go to the outside here, and they, they're scared to do it. I don't know why, but I call them bottom feeders. But it is what it is, and this place is just electric. It's like the, the greatest um, roller coaster ride in stock car racing, if you, if you can think of it that way. This place is just phenomenal. Race fans are just the best. It looks like this guy brought a Chase Elliott roof all the way here. So uh, he's coming from back towards the pit area. I'm sure he tried to or he got Chase to sign it for him. What's the weirdest thing you've ever signed? <laughs> Boy, there's that, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, man, I, you know, it's hard to say. You ever I signed mean, a baby? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've signed babies. I've, I, there, there's so many different things you've done. I mean, I, you know, yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't even know how to answer it. I mean, there's so many different things. I mean, you, there's things that you, you don't even, even add up to what a race car is. You know, a racing is about um you know baseballs because i threw the first pitch out at county stadium in in e95 so they wanted me signing baseball which i thought was kind of odd but you know yeah. things like that well maybe they could uh, get bob euchre to sign a racing <laughs> tire or something you know <laughs> now you'd have something <laughs> <laughs> i did throw a strike though oh did you? yeah it, it, it's really funny uh I, you know what I got to go up there, and I couldn't stand the mounts. I had to stand on the edge of grass. And, and, I, and I mean, I, I pitched in school, so the guy didn't know if I could throw the baseball or not. But, you know, I threw a pretty good fastball. And, he, I mean, it hit, hit dead nuts right in the, in the glove. And he looked at me and goes, hey, we're a little short on help tonight. He goes, we might need you for a back beat relief pitcher. And it was kind of cool because I had street, I mean, dress clothes on. But uh, to do that was kind of, kind of a special, special thing for me. It's just totally different than a normal race car deal. Well, we're closing in on qualifying. I saw Steve and Nancy climb in to his car. If you're just joining us, this is Alan Deeds, joined by four-time Slinger Nationals winner Rich Bickle for this free view here on Facebook Live. If you haven't ordered your pay-per-view coverage of tonight's race, you need to do so now. The time is slowly ticking down until the start of the 44th annual Cobblestone Hotel Slinger Nationals. Go to racingamerica.tv. You got you know, Chase Elliott, William Byron, uh, Ty Majeski, Eric Jones, uh, so many great guys here. And, and you were telling me a little bit earlier because, you know, we've seen guys like Bobby Allison come and, and Alan Kowicki come back after he had moved down south. You were telling me a story a little earlier about the one time Dale Earnhardt came and raced here. Yes, yeah, 1988, and um, he wasn't very good. And I walked over to him and I said, "Hey, put a little rear brake in the car. You'll pick up a bunch because you got a brake push." And I said, "Put some rear brake in." He goes, "Well, how do you do that?" And I thought he was punking me. And he, I said, "No, he's got to put rear brake in it." Well, how do you do that? And I said, "We well, turn the handle." What well, handle? And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, how do you do that?" And I'm like, I, I really thought he was punking me. And he goes, "Kid, he goes, our cars I drive got 65 Ford master cylinders and we don't have brake adjusters, so." And usually you have it marked which way it goes, front to rear, and it wasn't marked, so I was underneath the dash, look, it was a hanging pedal car. I got underneath the car, looking underneath there, and figured it out, and I, and I put a bunch of rear brake in for me when I picked up two tents, and I thought he was going to kiss me and come to pits. <laughs> and I tried to help him some more, but he still didn't end up being very good here. But uh, but that turned into a friendship that lasted for quite a few years, and that was pretty cool, a pretty cool story. And he returned a favor for you. Yeah, I thought I was going to buy Bobby Allison's uh, Bush Speedway car after they switched to the smaller bodies to run Daytona Talladega with, for the ARCA race. And Bobby wanted way too much money for his car, and I called Dale up out of the blue. and Because uh, he said, give he, me a call. Yeah, he, he, he said, if I ever can help you, and he gave me his card. And you got a little liquid courage and called him. Yeah, we're at my buddy's bar at the Red Baron Edge in Wisconsin, and, <laughs> and uh, I we all got talking about it, and I called him up, and he goes, well, kid, he said, you help me, I'm going to help you. He says, I'll take the motor out. You can have the headers. You can have the transmission. You have the gear, the drive shaft, and your ten grand. And I didn't have ten grand, and so the whole bar and everybody we got together and we threw some money together. And, and the guy that actually owned the bar, we, me and Phil Hammer and him drove down there and sat with Dale and drank beer and vodka all day. And we we got the car and loaded it up and brought it home. Wow, it's amazing how it goes full circle and. And and you've been able to do that for folks, too. I know you were telling me a story uh, about Tom Riffner uh, whenever you were down at, uh, God, what was it named then? Maybe Jeff Jeff, Coe, Jeff Coe, yeah. Before Peach State. And, and you guys didn't necessarily get along the greatest in the world, and you were able to help him out. 
Well, yeah, he had a part, and I was the guy in the pit area had a part, and then me and Tom didn't get a CII back in the day, and and uh, but I gave him the part because he was from home, and and uh, it's kind of cool that you know 35 years later we made amends and we got to you know talk things out, and and I really had to learn about his AMC program because I mean when he ran the, that uh, javelin and that uh, hornet, man, I mean he was the toughest guy to beat in, in that area in that time frame. Um, Dick Trickle and him both 167 features. Uh, one in, in 72 and one in, and Tom one in 75 and uh, you know I mean that thing was impossible to beat I mean you know it, it's just the stories that from from this era and the, that time frame to, to, to learn from them guys are just just phenomenal if you're not familiar with Slinger Speedway tell you a little bit about it uh, the track open as a fifth mile dirt track back in 1948 it measures a quarter mile now the track was paved and extended in 1974 Joe Shear and Dick Trickle split twin 99s in the first race here. 33 degree banking. And of course, Larry Deegan's trophy is uh, what goes to the winner here. He won the first race back in 1980. Fortunately, he passed away in 1981. And there you see a look at that banking here. And uh, right about where our camera's at, I was in the pits yesterday right before they started the green flag party. And I'm standing there at the, the pit entrance there off turn two. And I said, um, let's just go across the racetrack here at turn two. Now, this is before I saw it. Then I get there, and I'm like, I've, I've been to Bristol, Talladega, Winchester, all these places. And I said, oof, I don't, I don't know if we want to do that or not. We very gingerly went down to banking and were able to get across the racetrack. Well, like I said, this place is probably the greatest roller coaster ride you could, a drag, could ever drive a race car at. I mean, it's so fast and it's so much fun. And the banking and, you know, off of two, it's banked way more than off of four. It kind of flattens out down the front straightaway. But, man, this place is just awesome. And, you know, the, the thing that struck me is is I know that, that when you go around this racetrack, it's got to just because of the G-forces, it's throwing you down in the seat. It's trying to throw your head out the right side window. But not everybody, but some of you guys are able to get out after 200 laps. And is it safe to say it's not a big deal? Well, you know, it's, it's different nowadays because, I mean, you know, now they have – all these seats, containments, and headrests, and you know, back in the day, we didn't have anything. I mean, you made your you made your seat out of you know a 55 gallon barrel of gas. What know? was what were you telling me about being at Bristol and, and your pop trying to give you a little advice that you didn't take? Well, back in, we ran the short track car in Bristol in '87, and uh, <clears throat> we didn't have headrests. And my dad, I had a thing that went around my arm and my hooked to my helmet on the left side, so my head wouldn't fall off. And my dad said, we need to put it on. I go, ah, it's only 200 laps. It'll be fine. Yeah, well, you've been to Slinger. Who, yeah, who cares? Winchester, you know, Salem. But anyway, um, I let Dick get a straightaway ahead of me and run him down in four laps. And, I mean, we're so much faster in the field. And I said, with 25 to go, I'm going to go on by and win the race. Well, they told me 25 to go. And I couldn't I couldn't drive because my right my head was laying on my right shoulder. Like, Tony, <laughs> Tony Strupp used to race this way. He always lay, lay his head on his right shoulder. I don't know how he'd do it because, my you know, between the banking and everything else, I, I couldn't. I couldn't take a chance of wrecking Dick and myself, and we ran second. And my dad was so mad at me, but I had, from my ear to my shoulder, I had a knot in it for about two days. That I mean, it hurt, but it was kind of crazy that, you know, you look back and how things have changed. Now the seats, all these containments, and now you're almost like you're, you know, they're they're made to fit you. And yeah. Heck, back then you just had a kind of a normal seat, and you just you know you buy them and you put in the car and you never think about it. And even the head and neck restraint now, that it literally holds your head and neck in place there as we get ready to go here with qualifying for the 44th annual cobblestone hotel slinger nationals again you're watching a free view of super late model qualifying here this afternoon and the first car on track is the mitch smith auto sales toyota from P pinellas park florida two-time southern super series champion two-time winchester 400 winner stephen nassi and stephen has struggled here this week yeah, his car doesn't look that good qualifying right now. I mean, he's on stickers, and he's sideways getting into one, and he doesn't get off a of two very well, and he's staying really high getting into three. So, he's yeah, he's got his hands full. Do you throw the first lap away here? No. You don't throw anything away here. You, uh, you, 
you want to get as much heat in the tires as you possibly can get and you get three laps qualifying here and uh i don't know what he did to change the car but he's super free his best finish here uh six that came back in 2022 his time 11.582 seconds on track now the d'angelo's construction jd7 trucking chevrolet out of hubertus wisconsin is it hubertus hubertus that is john d'angelo's 11.512 on that lap finished third here in the nationals back in 2019. this car looks free too i'm surprised everybody's really free getting into one 11.467 seconds that's the quick time remember top 16 get locked in everybody else has to go to the last chance race slows down on his last lap now on the speedway driving the car number 14 the car corner Haas builders ford from roscoe illinois this is austin nason had a win at milwaukee back in 2019 his best finish here in the nationals a fourth in 2018 his car looks pretty pretty decent. I mean, I don't know what times he's running, but the car looks pretty good. Let's see what this lap's going to be. First lap was 11.510. This lap, 11.406. And here early in the going, that's the quickest. See what this final lap will be here. He slows down a little bit, so 11.406 right now. The quick time for Austin Nason. Qualifying now, the Jones Utilities Pepper Jack Kennels Toyota from Fredericksburg, Virginia. This is Connor Jones. He's been doing a little bit of everything this year. Currently 16th in cars, late model stock points. First time here in a super late model, 11.496, not too bad. Yeah, I missed the corner there. And it affected that lap. He slowed down 11.515. What did you see there? I just got loose off of four. He, he's trying to trying to hook the bottom too much. He caught the left front on the apron and got the car free. This lap better, 11.472, but he will stay third quick of the four that have qualified. This is the guy a lot of folks think will be the favorite, the Kafka Granite, Toby Carr, iRacing Ford from Seymour, Wisconsin. This is Tom Majeski, two-time Slinger Nationals winner, five-time Oracle Midwest Tour champion, and he's at the top of the board, 11.391. Yep. Second lap, 11.353, comes into this race, third in the NASCAR Truck Series standings, but still looking for his first win there this year. So right now, his quickest lap Looks like it's going to be 11.353, and that right now is the quick time. Now qualifying, driving a Chevrolet out of Nacita, Wisconsin, the 2016 NASCAR Truck Series champion, Johnny Sauter, his best finish here in the Nationals, an eighth. And Rich, he told me he's always struggled here. Yeah, I don't know why. He's such a great racer, but he just never seemed to get around Slinger very well. He broke the upper length in practice today, and uh, it went both rear shocks and drive shaft and the panner bar and just a bunch of stuff. And But he's just seemed to struggle here, and I just can't understand it because he's such a great racer. He actually did a pretty good pickup based on his practices, 11-4-3-9. That right now is third of the six cars that have qualified. Qualifying now the fastest car here yesterday in the Eric Jones Foundation Chevrolet from Byron Michigan, 2023 Money in the Bank winner at Berlin. This is Eric Jones. Best finish here in the Nationals, a second in 2016. Well, he should have won that race, but he got knocked out of the way. Who knocked him out of the way? Uh, Winston Cup champion, <laughs> which he does to a lot of people. <laughs> 11, let's see, picks it up here on this lap, 11, 5, 2, 9. He's going to be super disappointed with this, Rich. Sixth of seven, that's a big decline off of what we saw yesterday. Well, his car was really free, and he got into one really low, and the thing, like, hit the apron there, and it just sent the car up the racetrack, and that just, that just messes you up for the rest of the laps. And what I see today, too, is that the third lap is actually slower, which usually the third lap is the quickest lap here, but it must be because it's so hot out. Um, and the track is really slow compared to what it was two years ago, because, I mean, uh, I think we were in the ones when we qualified here two years ago. He got really sideways out of turn two. That's Blake Brown out of Caledonia, Michigan, 2014 Midwest Truck Series champion. 11-5-3-3, his best lap. That'll be seventh of the eighth qualifiers. You can keep up with your favorite driver and where they qualify with the ticker at the top of the screen. 
Qualifying now to Sound Gear Starkey Toyota from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. This is the car number two of William Sawalich, already a winner this year in the Arkham Menard Series. And he's in one of those fast Donnie Wilson Motorsports Toyotas. 11 4 6 3 right now, fourth quick with one more lap to go. He's really free, too. <clears throat> Last lap, and it'll be a little bit slower, so he'll stay fourth quick. Now, here's the fastest car from practice today, the Tool Shack Power Grade Incorporated Toyota from Lakeport, California. Last year's Snowball Derby winner, the six-time SRL Southwest Tour Champion, Derek Thorne. And right now, he's second quick with 11.390. Car looks good. Slowed down just a little bit there, yeah, though. Every, everybody's free. I, I just don't understand that. I mean, you can just see the car in the right rear is hanging out everywhere all around the racetrack. And, you know, it's just, it's just the track must have changed from practice because everybody seemed a little tight. As we stand right now, Ty Majeski the quickest with 11 3 5 3. Derek Thorne, Austin Nason, Johnny Sauter, and William Sawall at your top five. Qualifying now, the Serta Pro Painter Chevrolet out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. Six time Slinger Speedway champion and the 1999 Slinger Nationals winner, Conrad Morgan. And he's what, about uh, 190 years old? <laughs> well, I'm old. He's older than me. We've raced together for a lot of years. and. And just a great guy. I mean, seriously, he's about 70 or 80 years old. I, he's 70 something. He raced my dad forever. <laughs> hey, 11 4 5 2. That was fifth. Qu he picked it up on that lap. Fourth quick of the 11 cars that's qualified, and that may be close to making it in on time. Well, he had fast time here two weeks ago, and uh, them, they found something because he's been struggling, but uh, not bad for an old guy. I'm proud of him. Qualifying now, the interstate towing. Keith's Marine or Interstate Saw and Keith's Marina Ford from Slinger, Wisconsin. This is Brad Keith. Best finish here in the Nationals, a fifth in 2017. His best time right now, 11.493. That's not quick. Conrad's car is about the only car I've seen that wasn't free. Everybody else is free. See what Brad Keith does. This lap slows down. He'll stay not fast as qualifying now. In the Bressler Entertainment Chevrolet out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Eight-time Cup Series winner, including Atlanta just a couple of days ago, the 2022 Slinger Nationals winner, William Byron. Car looks pretty good. 11 4, 4 one first time around. This lap quicker, 11 4 0 2, and that's third quick. He really impressed me in that win here last year. This lap a little slower, third quick though, as we're closing in on the bubble. Remember, top 16 qualifiers will be locked in. Everybody else will go to the last chance race. On track now in the Maristem DeCab Quick Trip Toyota from Plover, Wisconsin. This is Gabe Summers. He's the current ASA Midwest Tour points leader, and he finished second in ASA Midwest Tour points last year. 11 four, nine, five right now, 11th quick. Man, just, just watching everybody, just so free. I'm just surprised at this. If you're going out late in qualifying, is there anything you can do to your car if you're scared it's going to be free? Well, you know, you actually open the stagger up here a little bit from four inches to race to four and a quarter, four and threes to qualify. Right now, I'd be adding air to the left rear, tired of tighten the car up. 11 four, nine, five, his best time was Gabe Summers. He's 11th quick qualifying now. The Paul Riley Company, coal, oil, and propane Chevrolet from Lomira, Wisconsin. The 2018 Slinger Speedway champion, Alex Prunty. Ooh, look at this, 11.358. That's second quick. Yeah, he gets around here really well. See if he can knock off Ty Majeski, his best finish in the Nationals back in 2017, and he does it. He finished second 2017, but right now, 11.304, quick time for Alex Prunty. He's the first car to go fast on the third lap, which is normal here. Qualifying now, the Froder and the Medical College of Wisconsin machine from Cambridge, Wisconsin. The eight-time Slinger Nationals winner and two-time Daytona 500 winner. This is the eight of Matt Kenseth. First lap, 11.453. He picks it up on this lap, 11.402. That moves him up to fifth. 
He didn't qualify good here last year, but he passed a ton of cars. Well, I mean, you know, he should. He's raced here a lot of years, and, you know, he, he gets around here pretty well. But just it's it'd be nice to watch him pass cars without running into him, though. <laughs> it happens, right? Uh, he's, you know, he's won this thing eight times, but I think he's only actually should have won it four times, so he keeps running into people on the last lap or so, so. All right. On I was one of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> In 94. Steven Nancy has just been bumped. Now Blake Brown on the bubble on the track. Now the Dunride Exterior Central Wisconsin Builder Chevrolet out of Wausau, Wisconsin for Luke Thinhouse. Hey, third quick 11-3-7-4. Let's car, see what he's car got. Look, car looks really good. Yeah, it does. The kid's a good racer. He picks it up, but not enough. 11 3 6 one. He'll stay third quick. Beat you for that track championship in 2021, didn't he? Well, that's because or I, you beat I, you. I, I, I went out of the ballpark here. Got wrecked by actually by the guy qualified right now. So yeah. uh, we had the championship one until that night. But, you know, it is what it is racing. All right. Rich Locke on the speedway now. The Ricardo's Pizza Direct Promotions forward from Muskego, Wisconsin. He finished sixth here in the Nationals back in 2000. 11.464 right now, 11th quick. That bumps Blake Brown. Eric Jones on the bubble. He, that's just really uh, disappointing after yesterday as Rich Locke will stay 11th quick. I mean, everybody is so free. I'm just I'm just shocked at this. Qualifying now, the Cobblestone Hotels with Soda Chop House Chevrolet from Pewaukee, Wisconsin for Grant Griesbach. Seventh in points here this year. Finished seventh in the Nationals back in 2019. Right now, he is 18th quick. See what he does here on this lap. He picks it up. That'll be 10th quick, 11 4 5 one. It bumps Eric Jones, puts Gabe Summers on the bubble. Picks it up a little bit on this lap, 11 4 2 one, and that'll put him eighth quick. Qualifying now in the Morris Midwest Akuma Chevrolet out of Wales, Wisconsin. Current points leader, R.J. Braun. Yeah, this kid gets around here really well, too. Um, he was fast in practice. Yeah, he's, his car looks good. Comes off the corner nice and square, no straight, not loose. Right now, ninth quick, 11.423. Gabe Summers has been bumped. Now Brad Keith on the bubble. See what this lap will hold. Wow, 11, 3, 4, 0, second fastest. How about that for R.J. Braun? <laughs> Qualifying now in the Kearns Motor Car Company Chevrolet from Utica, Wisconsin. Two-time pro late model champion here. A winner in super late models recently. This is Jacob Nottestad right now, 12th quick. That bumps uh, Connor Jones and puts John DeAngelis on the bubble. See what Jacob Nottestad does here, 11.426. That'll be 10th quick for him as the next qualifier heads out in the Wabam Converted Products Incorporated Chevrolet out of Colgate, Wisconsin. This is Ryan DeStefano, the 2013 Pro Late Model Champion here. And he has the sponsorship on from my cruise in January, so I hope he, hope he qualifies in. <laughs> Yeah, we need to talk about that. I want to go back as right now Ryan DeStefano, 19th quick. Scoring cleared itself right now. Connor Jones is still on the bubble in 16th. Let's see what DeStefano does. Right now, he is not fast enough. Still in 19th. And slower on this lap, so... Connor Jones will stay on the bubble. Their next qualifier out, the Duramax Trucking 3D Ranch Chevrolet from Waterford, Wisconsin. For Jeff Storm, his best finish in the Nationals a night back in 2022, and he's coming back from a hard crash at Milwaukee a few weeks ago. Yeah, that was bad. He broke up our A-frame coming off of four, and he that, that was a hard hit. 11-4-8-0 right now. That's 17th quick. Connor Jones still on the bubble. See what Jeff Storm does here. Not going to do it. He's going to the last chance race. 
Next driver to qualify, one of the Kawiki driver development drivers this year in the Zillich Asphalt Breaver Music Company Chevrolet from Merrill, Wisconsin. This is Levon Vandergeest. Finished fifth in Arca Midwest Tour points last year. 2019 Midwest Truck Series champion. Able to bump his way in with that lap. And we'll have to see where Levon is here. Not quick, 11.419. Connor Jones has been bumped. John DeAngelis now on the bubble. Qualifying now, the Mike Scott Plumbing Brembo Brakes Toyota from Pinellas Park, Florida. This is Michael Hind in his first Slinger Nationals attempt. Finished sixth in Southern Super Series points last year. Coming off a uh, weekly win at Citrus County a few weeks ago. His car is really free, too. And it's showing on the timesheet right now, 11.556. That's 24th quick of the 25 cars that have qualified. And he's going to stay 24th right there in front of Stephen Nassie. Next driver to qualify, the Shockwave Marine Seats R&J Auto Service Chevrolet from Stratford, Wisconsin. This is Derek Krause, finished 11th in Truck Series points last year. Finished second here in the Nationals back in 2021. This car looks nice and straight. I don't know if it's going fast. But yeah, we'll, it might be slow. <laughs> we'll see. It's kind of surprising to watch cars from up here instead of being in them. Right now, 19th quick for Derek Krause. So John DeAngelo stays on the bubble. We'll see if he can bump his way in here. And he's not going to be able to do it. Derek Krause stays 19th quick. Here's a guy who knows how to get around here. The Zeller Transportation Toyota from Slinger, Wisconsin. Five-time Slinger Speedway champion. And he's finished third in the Nationals two times. Steve Apel. And a great qualifying run for Steve Apel. 11, 3, 8, 7. He's already fifth quick. Well, he's a good friend of mine. He actually raced one of my snowmobiles back in the day in 2012, and, and uh, he's been around a while, and he's got this place dialed in. He bumps John DeAngelis, Rich Locke now on the bubble. See if April can move up the board any here from fifth. Nope, he'll stay fifth quick. Best lap, 11.384. Rich Locke on the bubble now as the next qualifier comes out. I think this is a great-looking race car. They had him sewing Chevrolet out of Big Bend, Wisconsin for Ryan Farrell. Finished eighth in ASA, or he's currently eighth in ASA Midwest Tour points. And his best finish here in the Nationals is seventh in 2015. First lap, very slow. Yeah, his car's super sideways, too. Hey, he picks it up a lot, though. 11, 4, 5, 6. That moves him up to 15th. It bumps Rich Locke. William Sawalich on the bubble. That might be a surprise for some folks. Still 15th quick here for Ryan Farrell. About seven more cars left to qualify. He'll stay 15th quick with an 11.456. As the next qualifier on track, the Soper Company's Ford from Wausau, Wisconsin. 2011 Slinger Speedway champion Jeremy Leepak finished second in the Nationals here twice. Not fast enough on that first go around as he comes around this time. And he's still low on the board, 11 5 4 7. Right now, that's only good for 27th quick. And he'll stay 27th quick, so William Sawalich stays on the bubble as the next car out. In the freight auction, Chevrolet from Dawsonville, Georgia, two-time Snowball Derby winner and the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Chase Elliott. First lap for Chase Elliott, 11, 415. That'll be 10th quick. It bumps William Sawalich, puts Ryan Farrell on the bubble. Second lap, 11. 470, or excuse me, 11384. So right now he's sixth quick as Chase Elliott. Picks it up again, 11363. Three, fifth quick for Chase Elliott as the next qualifier out. The first auto group Toyota from Seekonk, Massachusetts. This is Gio Ruggiero. 
an ASA Stars winner this year at Hickory and a ASA CRA Super Series winner at Salem. You just got to look at this, see how close everybody is. I mean, you're talking a tenth and a half between first and sixteenth. 11.435, that'll put Gio Ruggiero 14th quick now, and it bumps Ryan Farrell. 11.408, 11th quick for Gio Ruggiero. That will lock him in, that bumps Ryan Farrell, and right now Johnny Sauter on the bubble, which that may be a disappointment, but I think Johnny, the way his last couple of days is going, he was way down on the timesheet. This is a big improvement for him. Yeah, they definitely found something. Even after, you know, maybe they had a bad shock after they, you know, tore the rear end out of it and straightened, you know, put new shocks on it. It might have helped the car. Here's a winner at Slinger this year in Elite Eight competition, the Barker Motorsport Chevrolet out of Random Lake, Wisconsin for Brad Miller. Three-time Slinger Speedway champion. He's finished second in the Nationals a couple of times. Right now, he's 20th quick. 11.465, four, the quickest of his laps. It's a good buddy of mine, and uh, he said he's struggling qualifying, but the car has really great race speed, so I don't know what's going on, but he said he can't figure the qualifying thing out here. Well, here's his last chance to bump in. Right now he's 20th. He's only going to move up to 18th quick, 11.458. Johnny Sauter remains on the bubble. Brad Miller, he also won that Midwest Truck Series race here recently. Is the next qualifier out on track. This is the FLF Race Cars entry out of Lakeland, Florida for Steve Doerr, 2011 Red Bud 400 winner. His best finish here, a fifth back in 2013. I mean, he's sideways. I mean, going in through the middle and off, I mean, there's definitely something not right with that car. Right now, he's the slowest qualifier. 33rd quick, 11.598, the quickest of his laps. That, that car's way off yeah. the bottom. Yeah, he just, there's something definitely wrong there. He slows down, so he'll stay 33rd quick. One more driver here, and he's a guy who knows his way around this track, the Zeller Transportation, Porta John Chevrolet out of Allenton, Wisconsin. For the 2012 Slinger Speedway Champion, 2015 Nationals winner, Dennis Prunty. And right now, he is not in. Wow, 11 4 4 9, Rich. He is 17th quick. He is a, a hundredth of a second slower than Johnny Sauter right now. Here it is. Can't do it. Wow. And he gets around here really well. 11 4 4 1. And I want you to look at the difference here, Rich. Two one thousandths of a second between he and Johnny Sauter and making it in through time. Well, it's just like I said, probably from fast time to, to 16th is less than a tenth and a half. That's how tight, tough this place is. And you, I mean, you miss it by just a smidge. You know, a quarter inch of stagger ruins your day. Our coverage here on Facebook will close out here soon. You can still order your coverage that will start at 6 p.m. Central Time at RacingAmerica.tv. Let's go through the top 16 cars, though, that are locked in. Alex Prunty will be the quick qualifier with an 11.304 R.J. Braun second quick. Ty Majeski, Luke Finhouse, and Chase Elliott at the top five. Six through ten will be Steve Apel, Derek Thorne, William Byron, Matt Kenseth, and Austin Nason. 11th quick will be Gio Ruggiero, 12th Levon Vandergeest, 13th Grant Griesbach, 14th Jacob Nottestad, 15th Conrad Morgan. He makes it in on time. And Johnny Sauter, as we said, Rich, two one thousandths of a second quicker than Dennis Prunty. And that's the difference between, between being locked in and going to the last chance race. And as we talked, at car number five right there, Johnny Sauter, that is, a, this is probably a win oh. for him. Well, he, you know, like I said in the pits, he just, he, just, he just doesn't get around here. And I don't understand that. I mean, he's such a great race car driver. And just this place has, you know, got a bit. And, I mean, to, for him to make the race right now, I bet you he's smiling from ear to ear. And i got to be happy for Conrad. I mean, for a guy 70-plus years old to make the field right now. And that's, you know, I mean, him and Jerry Eckhart, Lowell Bennett, Larry Schuler. you know, there's not many guys from that era left. Well, there you have it for qualifying for the 44th Annual Cobblestone Hotels Slinger Nationals. Our coverage presented by Five Star Race Car Bodies. 
We're going to end our Facebook live coverage here now, but remember you can continue to stay with RacingAmerica.com, Facebook, Twitter, Racing America for everything that's going on here at Slinger Speedway. But if you want to watch, you've got to go to Racing America TV right now, RacingAmerica.tv, order your coverage. Our live pay-per-view coverage will begin again at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll have a quick uh, pre-race show into on-track festivities and then racing. So for Rich Bickle, I'm Alan Dietz. We'll see you here in just a few minutes back at 6 p.m. Central Time on RacingAmerica.tv. All I can say, people, is this has worked your $30, the greatest little racetrack in the country.